Hello and welcome to another Flight Gear tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can potentially handle an emergency situation when you're a passenger flying across the Atlantic and all of a sudden you get into a situation where you are in charge of the airplane. So I prepared such, a, such an emergency situation here in Flight Gear. So we're over the middle of the Atlantic and all of a sudden while you're looking out of the window there are strange things going on strange sounds coming from the from the cockpit and you walk over to the cockpit and then you find that both pilots have gone AWOL so they have disappeared and the only one who can save the situation is you so what are you supposed to do now so I paused the simulation and now I will unpause it as you can immediately see we have a strange bank angle so let's walk to the cockpit and you see both pilots are gone so you get yourself into the pilot seat and the first thing you do is you level the wings so roll the plane to the left to level the wings before you do any kind of pitch maneuver and then you gently gently pull up not too hard because you would otherwise overload the the airframe structure of your plane with g-forces and that would that's supposed to slow your plane down okay try to stabilize the plane and always keep the wings leveled see we had this overspeed warning but now it's gone now that we have stabilized the plane in fact we have a positive climb and also the speed is not too high now so at least we stabilize the plane for now now the next thing you should pay attention to your to your uh, altimeter we, we are quite low 14,000 feet that's way too low and we're still sinking so let's have a look at the central pedestal the thrust lever are on idle what we need is more power so we push it forward to maximum we need more thrust to gain altitude again try to keep your pitch angle between 0 and 10 degrees something around 5 degrees is always fine always make sure that on your okay full thrust is maybe too much let's use three quarters here okay let's center the view again so always make sure if you're absolutely unfamiliar with uh, the instruments always make sure that roughly half of this um, gyro instrument is blue and the other half is brown so blue for skies and brown for the ground and it should be something around 50 50 and make sure that this middle line here is leveled that your plane is not rolling to either side okay we can pitch up a little more 10 degrees would be the maximum that i would use as a rookie pilot here so five degrees is fine 10 degrees here in this gyro instrument is the maximum and as you can see this pointer here it points up it means we're gaining altitude that's something we need we are way too low and and um, the speed is also sort of okay something between 250 and 300 knots will do for cruise flight so we're gaining altitude the speed is also okay you can see where these uh, red indicators are that would be overspeed and then you will hear this overspeed warning again so we will try to gain altitude again and now we will leave the the speed management to the auto throttle you see the pilot has left both auto throttle and autopilot uh, disengaged we we will arm them both arm the auto throttle switches and the autopilot master switch Captain so that we can use them both but they are not yet active so we activate the auto throttle at by pressing this button when you press here instead of mach you get your speed in knots 400 that's way too much a little bit below 300 knots would be perfect for cruising speed across the Atlantic so let's slow down to uh, let's say 285 for example
Okay, good. 285. Also, always make sure, use the yoke and make sure that the plane is in a stable position, meaning wings leveled and something around 5 degrees uh, pitch angle here. 5 degrees into the blue. Now the autopilot. If we activate the autopilot, we should immediately press the hold, uh, this hold button for the for, to uh, make the plane keep its current heading. So we activate the autopilot and press hold. 109 degrees is our current uh, is our current heading. So that's um, mostly to the east, and that's totally wrong. We were heading from Europe to the USA. So what we need is something around 270. So let's turn until our until our plane is heading east, uh, west instead of east. And the altitude is also all wrong. To cross the Atlantic, we need um, we need a cruising altitude of something a little bit above 30,000 feet. And it must be an even number if we're westbound. So either 30,000, 32 or 34,000. So we choose 34 and we press this button flight level change to actually make the plane climb to this pre-selected altitude. Flight level change. And the plane will automatically select an optimal climb rate, vertical speed, to uh, reach this flight level while keeping the, the speed that you have adjusted in your auto throttle. So here you can see the vertical speed indicator. It points to something like 2000 feet per minute. This is a very decent and good climb rate. So altitude management is for the time being more important than heading management because when you're heading into the wrong direction, that's not immediately a catastrophe. But if you're going too high or too low, this could lead to catastrophic consequences. So first adjust your climb rate. Make sure that you're especially not too low, not ditching into the water. And then take care of uh, your, uh, the heading of your plane. So we want to go west. We want to uh, reach the American East Coast. So we have to keep turning this uh, heading dial to 270 so that we are heading straight to the west two hundred and seventy for the time being we'll get the job done so why do we need such a high cruising altitude of more than 30,000 feet? Well, the reason is simple. You need thin air to save fuel. Otherwise, you won't make it across the Atlantic with your fuel load. That's why you need at least 30,000 feet flight level. The higher, the better. But there is a structural limit of this plane. I think it's something around 40,000. But we don't want to get anywhere near the limits of this plane. So let's play it safe. 30, uh, 34,000. Why do we have to choose an even number and not an uneven? Well, that's um, international um, aviation regulation. When an airliner is westbound, it needs to go on an even flight level, 30,000, 32, 34. And if it goes eastbound, it has to be an uneven flight level to make sure that there's no danger of collision or um, proximity of planes that are heading towards each other. So we are now climbing towards 34,000. That's good. Our speed is 287 knots. We adjust 285, so that's perfectly all right. We're turning right so that we end up heading west, um, heading 270. So that's all okay. Now we can take, now that we've stabilized the plane and adjusted the autopilot and auto throttle correctly, we can take care of some, uh, some other things that need to be done in case of such an emergency. So 
one thing you should do is this is your transponder also called the squawk so it's the radio code that your that your um, airplane is sending so that other airplanes and also air traffic controls can identify you and we're using a code of 4000 which is just a standard code but as we're in an emergency we use the emergency squawk which is 7700 so we change from 4000 to 7700 and there's a very simple rule of thumb to remember this it's called 77 seven, i'm falling from heaven 76 would indicate that you have radio problems that you cannot communicate with the air traffic controller and 75 man with a knife means you're in a hijack uh, situation so you use 7700 and also make sure that uh, your transponder is in fact transmitting something so don't turn it to standby or off but use the maximum capacities of this instrument go to uh, it's called mode sierra or uh, or altitude mode so that your plane does not only send this code but also its current altitude as an information for air traffic controllers next thing try to get someone on the radio also try to get some help ask the flight attendant to find someone who actually knows how to aviate and especially how to land an airplane maybe one of the passengers uh, has got a pilot's license and is uh, more qualified than you for the job but anyway get some qualified help and even if it's just a person with basic understanding of math who could calculate a rule of three for you try to get this co-pilot seat occupied by someone who can assist you and this person can also take care of radio communication ask your new co-pilot to dial in the emergency radio frequency into your VHF radio and the emergency frequency is 121.5 this is an international standard so into this standby radio we dial in 121.5 decimal 5 using these two dials here so decimal 5 okay but that's only standby that doesn't help you yet you also have to switch those two uh, frequencies so that 121 decimal 5 is your primary frequency and not the standby so you press this double arrow and now 121 decimal 5 is the frequency that you have selected and you should also turn the radio on so that you can actually hear something pressing this button VHF and turn the, the volume up so turn this arrow to the right so that you can hear if there's someone calling you on the radio ask your co-pilot to send a mayday signal and to get someone to help you to especially to guide you where to find your next uh, airport and how to do the landing procedure okay that's it for the moment how we're doing in terms of altitude 32,000. that's okay so we're still climbing at a decent rate something like 1000 feet per minute and we're still climbing and no warnings no alarms also speed is stable uh the our our um, wings are leveled we are uh, our pitch angle is something around uh, three degrees that's also that's also okay everything seems to be under control so if we don't get any help from an air traffic controller to guide us to give us information where we should be heading and in which altitude we have to help ourselves and that's where this map instrument comes very handy it can show you different information and you can display this information using this dial here these two dials this is the flight plan so it shows you that we're heading to the west that's not very helpful at the moment what is more important is to find a potential airport where we could safely land our airplane 
So we change from plan to map. We turn this dial here. Still nothing to be seen, but also we have zoomed in completely. So this five here means five nautical miles. The whole range is 10 miles. That's not too much of a view. So we use the maximum range instead of a range of 10 miles. We want to use 640 miles. That's already quite something, even when you're uh, in the middle of the Atlantic. But still nothing really useful in sight, but this will change once you press the airport button. And there you can see these blue circles, these are actually airports. And now what we will do, we will simply be heading for the nearest airport. CY, this is an abbreviation for Canadian airports. So we make the plane turn to the right using the heading dial of the auto pilot you also see this makes this purple dashed line turn to the right this is your target heading and we simply turn this dial until the purple line hits the nearest blue circle the nearest airport c y y t Okay, this, the distance to this airport is something around 320 nautical miles. Of course, you cannot do a landing approach when you're in, uh, on flight level 340, so in 34,000 feet. You need to lower the plane. You have to, uh, you have to sink down to a, to a decent flight level, but not yet. Once we're closer than 150 or 100 nautical miles to this airport we have to start our descent we shouldn't do it earlier just to save fuel we we still um, keep our plane in thin air in high altitude so that we're saving fuel because fuel saving uh, gives us more options imagine that this first airport it is blocked for example or there is bad weather you cannot see anything so you cannot do a landing attempt or the runway is simply too short for an airliner of this size then you need alternatives so the idea is we approach the nearest airport and if that doesn't work out for any reason we can try another one for example this one cyqx lima foxtrot victor papa these are all uh, different options that we could try then. Make sure that you're not uh, heading for one uh, lonely airport somewhere on a, on a small island in the middle of the Atlantic and then you find out that you simply cannot land there and then you're running out of fuel. That would be a catastrophe. So make sure that you keep as many options open as possible. So we have to readjust a little bit more. Okay, always regularly check your flight parameters. So speed 285, that's perfectly okay. 34,000 feet, perfectly okay. Also your roll angle, is all, you have almost um, leveled the wings, perfect. No alarms. Now what about fuel management? In this instrument here, you can get uh, information like, for example, warnings once you're running low on fuel or um, there are warnings um, and more information displayed in this area of this instrument. For example, uh, what is displayed here are inform is information about your two engines, about the exhaust gas temperature, EGT, and um, and on which uh, on how much percent of its maximum capacity your engines are operating so that's all green no warnings passenger signs on okay as you're not uh, a professional pilot make sure that the seatbelt signs are on they are so that's okay uh, in case you're doing some weird maneuvers you don't want your passengers to hurt themselves and now you can ask, for example, your co-pilot to do the math for you. Here you get your current fuel quantity. You, uh, so you can see that the two wing tanks still got some capacity and that the center tank is empty. 
so they are well balanced 31 decimal 7 31 decimal 7 times 1000 pounds so is this fuel quantity enough to make it to the nearest airport and maybe perform one or two go round maneuvers for practice who knows you can ask your uh, your co-pilot to use a stopwatch to um, to record the rate of uh, the rate of your fuel uh, deteriorating and then with the simple rule of three calculating for how much more time you could go on with your plane in the current uh, with this current speed and altitude before you would run out of fuel so in the end he should he or she should be able to tell you if we keep this heading and speed and altitude the fuel would be sufficient for let's say two more hours or five more hours and this gives you a feeling how urgent your landing maneuver is and how many more options and how many more go around maneuvers you got left before you run out of fuel because you must avoid running out of fuel at any cost this must not happen theoretically you could land this plane also in a gliding mode but it's extremely difficult extremely dangerous and even highly trained professional pilots have failed trying this so make sure you don't run out of fuel if you are very low on fuel and you got the runway inside even in non-perfect conditions it would mean squeeze this plane down to the runway no matter what otherwise you can uh, do a lot of um, let's say test approaches and try to uh, try to find out how the plane handles with the gear down and with very with very uh, low speed just to get a feeling for the plane you can do uh, several go-round maneuvers if you can afford it fuel wise so fuel management is paramount don't run out of fuel so we're still heading for our target airport CYYT I have no idea how large this airport is how many runways it got and if the runways are long enough but under normal circumstances, if you're so close to the next airport, you should already be able to communicate with the air traffic controller of this airport. And this person would give you guidance already in which direction you should be heading to avoid proximity with other planes for an approach pattern to this airport so that you can do um, a safe landing approach to his airport. Um, but what we are trying to simulate now is the absolute worst case that you get nobody on the phone maybe your radio is broken by those weird uh, flying maneuvers that the plane had to endure before so we assume that no one is answering your emergency calls and you are all on your own you and your co-pilot you have to handle everything yourself how would you do that so as we are approaching the airport you can zoom in a little instead of 640 nautical miles range you you uh, go down to 320 and this gives you a clearer picture if you are actually heading for your airport and so that you don't have to solely uh, rely on this very very uh, crude uh, display there is another option that you as a pilot have got maybe you've seen when you when you have been a passenger on an airliner that the that the passengers they get some kind of gps information instead of watching videos they can also see where is your plane right now located in the sky and if passengers can get this gps information why shouldn't the pilot use the same thing so where do we find this gps picture showing you a detailed map of the surroundings and the actual gps position so longitude and latitude of your plane so if we turn our view to the left this display here will do the trick here on this display it's of course not a touch screen but you can press those buttons on the frame if you click on pilot utilities so you uh, there will always be different uh, different options in different airplanes so we cannot assume that it will be a Boeing 777 uh, where you have this emergency like we got now Here it is written Boeing 777 you can also see that this is a Boeing because it's got a yoke 
because Airbus models usually got a side stick located here on the on the side of the cockpit instead of a yoke. So if you press pilot utilities, that's I found out by trial and error. There you find this menu point GPS position. And if we press this, magically a map of our current position over the Atlantic appears and we can see that so this is uh, this is uh, geographically centered so this this up here is north west east south and you can see the the closest land mass here is Newfoundland so we can assume that this airport that we're heading for is somewhere here on the eastern on the eastern shores of Newfoundland because this is here part of part of Canada so here we can also get a geographical overview where we are heading to and it's also good to have a, a second opinion so a second source of information where we are because imagine if this display here is giving us wrong information if it leads us into the wrong direction we could eventually just simply run out of fuel if we don't really find this airport that is indicated here so it's always better to have a second source of information so we always um, we always uh, keep looking on both those screens on this geographical GPS screen and also here on our flight instrument on the map instrument. Okay. As I said, we will start our descent once we're more or less 100 nautical miles out. So I will do a little time warp now, not to bore you with just a straight uh, cruising flight here. So I will stop briefly stop the video now and restart it once we are uh, around about 100 miles out. Okay, so now we're back again from our little time warp. So we are now 120 nautical miles out from our target airport. Time to slow down the plane and then to, uh, to sink down to a lower flight level. So first we reduce the speed from 285 to 250. 250 knots is the speed limit for airplanes if they fly below 10,000 feet. So first we slow down the plane. You could use those air brakes here, speed brake, to slow down and also to, to uh, lower the plane's altitude even faster, but we will not do this. This is only for experienced pilots and not for flight zimmers and rookies. So first we reduce the speed to 250 and then we adjust a new target altitude of 10,000 feet. And to make the plane uh, descend to te from 34,000 to 10,000, we again press flight level change. This is a uh, typical feature of Boeing airplanes, this flight level change. First, you choose, an, you choose an altitude and then you activate. So let's see if the autopilot does what we want it to. Okay, we're getting slower. That's that's okay because uh, we have to find the right balance between actually sinking and at the same time um, not speeding up the plane under normal circumstances. If you uh, if you descend, your plane will pick up speed. So you have to make sure that your plane does not descend too steeply otherwise you would pick up too much speed so the speed should remain stable around 250 knots if it gets too fast you have to level the plane again by pressing this hold button here okay but it stays around 250 that's okay also our sink rate it's something around 3000 feet per minute this is quite high but it's still okay the airplane chooses an optimal sink rate you can also adjust the sink rate manually when you turn this dial here with down and up, you see your actual vertical speed. Now I adjusted it to 2,500, 2,500 feet per minute. This is a high but not extremely high sync rate. 
always make sure that uh, you're not that your plane is not too fast and not too slow something around 250 plus minus 10 knots would be okay also make sure that your plane once you reach uh, 10,000 feet really stays on this flight level and doesn't sink any further you always have to maintain very closely what the autopilot does because the autopilot can have a malfunction that doesn't happen very often but you could have made a handling mistake here and you must make sure that if you made a mistake by, uh, and when adjusting the autopilot that you correct it in time before something happens okay so can see that we're heading almost straight for this airport CYYT we turn a little bit to the left and now uh, we're heading perfectly for this blue circle for our target airport okay under normal circumstances when we do a, um, a landing attempt here we need the exact air pressure around the airport to adjust our altimeter but as we assume that there is no radio contact and we got no other source of information we just use the standard air pressure here std is when you press this button of your uh, altimeter instrument here here you can adjust a certain air pressure either in in uh, in hectopascal or in inches you can change between the uh, European and American system here so this would be for American system and hectopascal would be the European metric system and if you press standard again then there is some kind of uh, there's some kind of air pressure here shown the standard air pressure equals 1013 hectopascal by turning this knob here you can adjust it 1013 and in the american system it would uh, equal 29.92 inches so we turn this outer ring here 29.92 but if you just simply press the button standard would equal the same amount 29.92 if you don't know better just use the standard air pressure this will be good enough so the altitude on your altimeter will deviate from your real altitude maybe one two or three hundred feet but not as much uh, so much that you could not correct it when you're on short final when you're heading for that one way so that would be good enough for a visual landing approach so all we do is just visual we're not relying on radio navigation and on ILS on on uh, automatic landing systems we have to land this plane in visual flight mode VFR like a, a small Cessna plane because we got no no information that we need for an automatic or radio controlled approach so I press standard again and this is how we keep it until the end of this flight just keep it on standard and you're fairly safe it will be good enough for a, a VFR landing approach so just to tell you the general concept of what I will try to do first zoom in a little more the more we zoom in the more precise is the information that we get we have to turn a little bit more to the left again so once we're heading for the airport on short final we will see the airport when we are six nautical miles from the airport or less then you get then you can get a visual uh, impression of the runway and if in fact you are well aligned with the runway you could try a landing attempt but that would be a very lucky coincidence that if we don't know how the runway is oriented or the several runways that this airport may have you cannot assume that you're so lucky that in your first attempt you will be perfectly aligned with the runway so let's assume that we will have to do at least one maybe even two go rounds so the first go round will be we will be heading for the airport until we see the runway we will be flying over the runway and then we turn the plane into exactly the direction of the runway orientation so that we know for sure what is the runway orientation then we continue flying away from that runway until we are again something like 20 miles out you need a 20 miles reach 
for another landing approach. So to get the runway alignment right for the next for your next try. So you're fl we're flying downwind away from the runway, do 180 degrees turn, go on exactly the back beam course, and then we will still not try a real landing approach, but we will do a go round maneuver. We will lower the gear and disengage the autopilot and try to get a feeling for the plane's controls for the aileron for the rudder for the elevator how the plane handles when it is very slow when the flaps are down and when the gear is down because you must get a feeling for the plane's reaction when you're on short final and once we're over the runway we will accelerate again retract the gear and do the same maneuver again. So we fly away from the airport. We do a go around. We fly away from the airport until we're 20 miles out. Do a U-turn. And then we will try our real landing approach. If we're feeling uncomfortable, if maybe the runway alignment is not perfect or the speed is too high or we are too high or too low, do another go around. Because as you can see, we still got plenty of fuel when the whole emergency situation started, we had something around 32,000 uh, pounds of fuel in each of our wing tanks. And now it has only slightly reduced. So we still got plenty of, view of fuel. We could do many uh, go around maneuvers and landing attempts because we have shortcut our route a lot. We were originally heading for some US American airport and in fact, was um, New York JFK and of course this Canadian coast it's much closer so we have saved a lot of fuel because we are going for a closer target than originally planned so this saved us a lot of fuel now so that we can do multiple landing attempts and go around maneuvers in case we want to no need to hurry things up Okay, let's turn a little bit more to the left for perfect alignment with the airport, maybe not with the runway orientation. And for this first overflight here, we will uh, lower the plane's uh, flight level to 5000 feet. That should give us, in case the, uh, the sky is not overcast, we should get a very good f view of the runway itself. And it will uh, keep us high enough in case we get into some kind of emergency situation, turbulence or some trouble with the autopilot, we could still react. Um, if you're flying below 5000 feet, that's already uh, that you're already in a kind of danger zone and you should never fly lower than 3000 feet unless you really want to make a serious landing attempt. And this is a, a point where you should already have lowered your gear. So the rule of thumb for lowering the gear is the plane has to be slow and low enough, something around 3000 feet, uh, speed not more than 160 knots, and you should have the runway clearly in sight. That's a situation where you would lower the gear. And if you decide to abort your landing approach and do a go round, make sure that you retract the gear here with this instrument you always find this lever here in any airplane it always got some kind of a wheel at its end to clearly show you this is your the lever to lower and to raise the gear and of course up means that the gear is up and down means that the gear is lowered okay as we are a little bit more than 40 miles out time to lower the flight level even more and also to slow the plane down let's say 225 that comes into effect immediately so there's nothing like a speed level change but only flight level change and now we also lower our flight level to 5000 feet and flight level change we must make sure that uh, we are low enough for a glide path when we are 20 miles out. Okay, maybe not now because we are not uh, really attempting a landing maneuver yet. But under normal conditions when you are really on short final. When you are 20 miles out as a rule of thumb your altitude should be something around 5000 feet. 
and then you start your descent with a descent rate of around 750 um, feet per minute. Okay, now that we are below 10,000 feet, we will uh, activate the headlights. So the landing lights. Okay, so there's still no coast in sight. Let's see where we are geographically. So we're just off the coast of Newfoundland. Pretty soon the coast should come into view. Let's check our heading again. That seems to be okay. And we will be uh, flying over this airport um, with an altitude of 5,000 feet. We will keep the, the air pressure of the altimeter to standard. We can already prepare some things for landing attempts. So what we need to do... So when you check the central pedestal uh, in, uh, in cruise altitude, you must make sure that uh, the speed brakes are not engaged, so they shouldn't be up, but they should be uh, uh, they should be down. And we will for a landing attempt, we will arm them. I will arm them now, uh, so that we don't forget it. Normally, you would have the co-pilot remind you for the for the um, approach checklist to arm the speed brakes. Another thing that we need to do is we have to gradually lower the flaps. Now we are in flaps up and once we uh, are on our glide path down to the runway we should uh, slow the plane down and also gradually apply more flaps and in the end when we do the touchdown we should be on full flaps 30 degrees. Then the bank angle it's set to auto the maximum bank angle that the autopilot allows it's set to auto we will keep it this way but there's one more thing we must adjust. The auto brakes. So the auto brakes they help us uh, once we have touched down the plane. It helps us uh, so to activate the wheel brakes automatically. We will uh, switch them to max auto. We we will activate the thrust reversers, but I'm not planning to really use them. So once we have touched down the plane, I will activate the thrust reversers. But I will keep the thrust lever to idle just in case we need them. Then we could push the thrust lever forward to also uh, get a thrust reverse effect to slow the plane down before we activate the wheel brakes, not to overheat them. So just as my... Ah, here you can see the coast of Newfoundland coming in sight. Here it is. Just let it pale. Uh, here on the left you can see it better. So, we have almost made it across the Atlantic. So, we will keep the, the um, auto throttle active until touchdown. It is very helpful to keep a constant speed while approaching, especially when you're not experienced with landing maneuvers. But we must make sure that right after touchdown, we disengage the auto throttle. Otherwise, it will generate still more thrust and that's something you don't need uh, once you have touched down on the runway you want the plane to slow down and not accelerate again that's why either directly before touchdown or right after touchdown you have to disengage the auto throttle a typical landing speed for this kind of airplane would be something around 140 knots so something between 135 140 knots will do with full flaps and deal down these are the things you must remember when you're uh, when you're on short final before the runway, always double check that you have really lowered the gear and that you have really lowered the flaps to maximum. This will help you. So the the flaps to maximum to 30 degrees will help you keep the the rolling distance on the runway to an absolute minimum so that you don't overshoot the runway. Okay, as we are now something like 20 miles out, we will increase the zoom level again. So something like 25 miles out. And 
we turn one degree to the left again to have a perfect alignment with the airport. Weather is good, so no clouds. That should give us a very good overview over the um, uh, runway geography of this airport. If there's a, if there's a runway available at all, and if it appears to be long enough for our kind of uh, airliner. Okay, once we're 20 miles out, we will practice gradually um, reducing the speed and also lowering the flaps just to get a feeling how the plane reacts while we're still on autopilot. But we need to uh, slow the plane down so that we also got enough time to align with the runway, even if we don't try a touchdown. But we in the end, we want to align with the runway heading so that we know the exact heading of the runway. This is an information we need for a successful touchdown approach for later. So we will gradually lower the speed from 225 to 160 knots. Okay, we can zoom in even more. I forgot to explain what the speed brake is for in case of landing. So you got three positions here. Down, armed and up. Down, it means that the that the speed brakes are completely deactivated. These are those uh, those kind of flaps on the top of your wings. And armed means they are not yet active, but they are activated automatically after touchdown once your gear touches the runway then the speed brakes are are unfolded automatically the, to press the airplane down on the runway so that you get a good grip with your with your uh, tires uh, so that you got a good control over the over the airplane while using your wheel brakes and up uh, permanently uh, keep those speed brakes up. This is something you would do in case you want to descend very rapidly from your from your cruising altitude. So that's not something you would use uh, while doing a touchdown uh, attempt because it would slow down your plane way too much. It would create too much drag so the plane will get very very unstable. Instead we use armed so that those speed brakes unfold once we have touched down. That should help us keeping the plane under control once we're on the runway. Okay, still no landing lights in sight. That's that's not a surprise because we're more than 10 miles out. As a rule of thumb, after 6-7 miles out, uh, you should be able to see the runway landing lights. So there are normally four landing lights uh, at the beginning of the runway. And when you are on the correct light path, two of those landing lights should be should be white and two should be red. That means you're approaching the the runway in in the correct uh, glide slope angle, in the correct vertical angle. So now we can see the the airport area. I will push up the seat a little bit to get a better overview. Otherwise, the dashboard is in the way. And now we will slow down to 200 knots and apply flaps position one. You can see the indication here. And also those things that we that we prepared, you can see them here in this information dashboard. So the speed brakes are armed, that's what we want. Auto brakes are on maximum, passenger signs are still on. This is especially important now that we're getting into the critical phase of the flight. Let's reduce the speed even more, 180, flaps 5, turn a little bit to the left. We will do this maneuver only with the autopilot now. You can see there is a runway. We are not well aligned, 
So this would be a typical situation for a pilot to do a go-around maneuver. Uh, a real pilot would not try uh, a, landing, um, a landing maneuver in this situation. We are way too high. You see all four landing lights are white. We are way too high. We are not well aligned. And also this runway appears to be quite short and it ends in the forest. So there's not too much of a safety margin. That does not look good for this. Is a, when you see this kind of pattern, um, you shouldn't uh, try a landing maneuver. So we try to get a little slower, 170, more flaps, flaps 15. We will not go to maximum flaps now. This is something we would only do for the real landing approach. So you see this runway here, it doesn't seem to be good, but these, there's a second runway that seems to be way longer. I think our target runway should be the second one and we are almost perpendicular to it, so no use trying a, a landing attempt. But we will try to align with this runway. We will do a sharp left turn to align with this runway. Okay, 160 knots and flaps 20. And now we start turning left. Okay, turn left in more and let's assume we look out of the window. Turn left even more to align with the runway so that we get an idea what is the runway orientation. Okay, so it seems we turn a little bit more to the left. 275 could be our runway uh, orientation. Okay, what we do now, we will uh, keep the flight level 5,000 feet. We will accelerate again, 280. and retract flaps let's accelerate to 200 and keep flaps position one Always make sure that your speed stays between those orange and red margins here, then you're safe. Otherwise, you're bound to get maybe into a stall situation. So we will zoom out again so that we can estimate when we are 20 miles out. We do a turnaround and then we do our first landing uh, attempt simulation. So our first, this was just to get an overview of the airport. The airport seems to be okay for a touchdown maneuver for this kind of airplane and then we will do a go-round maneuver and for this go-round we will um, we will deactivate the autopilot so that we get a feeling for the plane's reaction once you apply aileron rudder and and um, elevator We 
we can speed up even more, 210, and retract the flaps completely. Always make sure you stay away from the orange and red zone here, because this is the stall zone, then you would be too slow, your wings do not generate enough lift uh, to keep the flight level. So then the stick shaker, so this this vibration device here for the for the yoke would be activated and then if you feel that you have to accelerate immediately make sure uh, that the plane's attitude stays stable then okay this would be 20 miles i think we would soon be far enough out to do 180 degrees turn so let's quickly do the math 275 275 minus 180 when we do the go around uh, when we do this not go around the the turn around the u-turn so 280 minus 180 is 100 so it would be 95 our target heading to return to this airport and to align with the runway would be 95 degrees so almost a little bit more than uh, eastbound but we have to make a decision if we want to do the uh, if we want to do this u-turn either going to the left or to the right so i will first do a 30 degrees turn to the right and then do this uh, u-turn so that the the whole maneuver looks a little bit like a question mark because if we just do a 180 degrees turn for example to the left we would be way off course even if we uh if, if we go for course 95 we would not be heading for the for the the airport so we would be off track that's why we have to do a little correctional maneuver first before we do our actual uh, U-turn. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now we do this 30 degrees turn to the right, meaning 305. Now we can also lower the speed again. Let's go down to 180 and lower the flaps again and let's say 185 just to be sure maybe more flaps Okay, to make sure that we don't get into a stall. In such a low altitude, a stall is very dangerous. And now we do our U-turn. So that's more than 180 degrees. The target that we calculated is 95 degrees. So we turn to the left, use the autopilot for that, until, until we reach a target heading of 95. And that should point directly towards the airport if these two values are matching so we're heading for the airport and the our heading is 95 then we should be well aligned with the runway and all the rest we can correct manually once we have deactivated the autopilot we will keep the auto throttle running all the time for an inexperienced pilot it is too much multitasking handling the throttle and the and the um, heading of the plane at the same time okay we zoom in again so 95 as you can see it's almost we're almost heading for the airport that should be good enough once we are heading perfectly for the airport, I will switch to manual controls and then we will experiment a little bit. So it's not 95, it's 88 now. And we will lower the speed and flaps. And this time we will also lower the gear.
and we'll do a manual go around maneuver. As soon as we got the runway in sight, I will turn off the autopilot and we will fly the plane manually to get a feeling for the plane's reaction. So landing lights are on. Let's see about the fuel. 25, that's still plenty of fuel, so we can, could do multiple go-around maneuvers if we want to. Okay, and now laps 25 and 160 knots. This is it. This is what we will try to keep. Okay, let's zoom in even more. Turn a little bit more to the left. So a couple of degrees, plus minus five degrees uh, deviation from the runway orientation would be okay. Otherwise you would have to do a, a go round maneuver for sure. So now we can, as soon as we get the runway clearly inside, we will lower the gear. There are two ways how you can uh, deactivate the autopilot. One is the uh, standard way. You just press this autopilot button and that will, uh, then the autopilot is still armed, but it is uh, just deactivated. And there is this um, emergency switch here, this autopilot disengage that will shut down the autopilot completely. And this is more for emergency situations. So we will just do a regular autopilot uh, deactivation. And um, also these two master switches here, it's similar for the auto throttle. There's an auto throttle button where you can deactivate the auto throttle and those two master switches, uh, which are more for, for uh, emergency. If you want to make sure that there's absolutely no interference from the auto throttle. Okay, it seems that we have to turn left more to align with the runway. You can see that, okay, you see that our uh, runway alignment is far from perfect. That's due to this uh, radius of our 180 degrees U-turn. So now I will deactivate the autopilot, but keep the auto throttle running and I will lower the gear. So this is also clearly uh, an indication for a go-round maneuver here. Uh, with this bad runway alignment, you would not attempt a touchdown. But we will try to get as close to the runway as possible without really touching the runway with the gear. We have to aim left of the runway because of the bad alignment. And we will point the nose down. Nevertheless, the plane should keep this pre-selected speed of 160 knots. So you can play a little bit with the aileron and also the rudder you shouldn't use for the for the uh, for the approach only uh, directly before touchdown. You could use the rudder to do some fine tuning of your heading uh, without the plane banking to the left or to the right so that you keep the wings leveled while adjusting the, the heading of your plane to perfectly hit the center line of the runway. But here for these maneuvers you would rely solely on the aileron and on your elevators and don't use those foot pedals Maybe just a short explanation of the foot pedals. These pedals here, 
when you push them with your heels they are connected to each other and if you press the left heel then your plane will yaw to the left and if you press the right uh, pedal it will it will uh, yaw to the right so it's not like a steering wheel for your feet but it's really to push your plane to the side so we're not really trying to touch down we just try to align with the runway but still maintain a decent altitude uh, above 2000 feet with the gear down to get a good feeling for the plane's reaction so the Boeing 777 normally is easy to handle and well mannered and 160 knots is still fast enough so that the plane reacts well to our uh, input okay so we managed to get the runway alignment right more or less but of course we are way too high and once we're over the center of the runway we will accelerate and also retract the gear okay let's speed up so this pre-maneuver that we did before the u-turn it seems to be it has been insufficient it wasn't it wasn't enough so we got quite drastically off our course okay so we want to get back to the course 95 degrees and we will activate the autopilot again and it should make our plane climb to 5000 feet again until we're 20 miles out and then we will try another u-turn and this time we will do a real landing attack okay let's see if we're missing something we have to retract the flaps even faster this time i will use 190 190 knots and flaps i will keep flaps five make sure that you don't sink especially don't sink below 3000 feet when the autopilot is on so we're climbing towards 5000 feet that seems to be all okay we got our uh, runway heading of 95 so after the next maneuver we should be back to 275 again let's zoom out again so that we get a feeling when we're 20 miles out okay so that the airport is still visible but that we get a feeling for the distance between the top of this triangle which is our plane and the airport the blue circle so it seems to be something around 10 miles out now 10 more miles to go before we do the go around uh, the, the u-turn not the go around go around is what we just did okay and as we did not touch down the wheels the speed brakes did not engage they are still in position armed and we have to monitor this that they are in position armed if we do a real touchdown attempt okay we have reached our target flight level 5000 feet let's zoom out once more speed is a little bit above 190 we are well between the two red and orange margins here so we are safe from getting into a, um, a stall everything looks normal now always check the fuel again so still plenty of fuel available we could do several more go around maneuvers. here you can get some information about the flap limits uh, so that you don't apply flaps when you're still too fast but uh, we will uh, rely more on those uh, safety margins here between those red and orange zones keep your speed because when you apply flaps 
these orange and red markers they change their position so with flaps applied you can fly at lower velocity while still uh, avoiding a uh, stall so with 190 knots that would be too slow for flying around without flaps so we're using flaps 5 and we're doing fine okay so we will reach out a little bit more this time and maybe we use 35 degrees for the for this pre maneuver This time, to fly a tighter turn, we will use uh, a lower speed, we will go for 180 and apply more flaps. Flaps 15, 180, and now we will do our pre-maneuver, we turn to the right, 35 degrees to the right, meaning heading 130. Always ask your co-pilot to double check what you're doing and to remind you of things that you might have forgotten or missed. Okay, this time we will keep this interim course a little bit longer. And after the U-turn we will make the plane descend with 700 feet per minute descent rate. Make sure the gear is still up, that would cause too much drag otherwise. Let's keep going a little bit more. Last time our pre maneuver was way too short, we were quite drastically deviating from our back beam course. And I think we're due for the U-turn now. So we turn to the left until we reach our target heading 275. To basically do the same thing as before, just this time we want to try a real touchdown. Okay, this is now 280. So we will be aiming for the airport and do the final fine tuning manually. So now we should be something like 20 miles out. Let's zoom in again. Yeah, that looks good. So now after, once we have leveled the wings, we will start descending. So already let's adjust to, let's say 2,500. Turn a little bit more to the left and now it looks pretty good 277 instead of 275 this is a pretty good alignment and now that the wings are almost leveled we will do the flight level change and we this time we manually adjust the sink rate 700 feet per minute this equals roughly a three degrees glide path and we gradually lower the speed and the flaps again Just this time we get serious. Let's adjust the, the um, thrust levers also. So lower the flaps. Okay. 
Let's go through our checklist. Ask your co-pilot to walk through the checklist. Speed brakes are armed. Auto brakes are for the wheel brakes are set to maximum. Flaps are okay. Speed it's okay, so we still have to lower the speed and the flaps. Autopilot and auto throttle are both active. And once we have touched down, I will simply cut off the auto throttle with the with the main switches to make sure that the auto throttle does not interfere in any way with our braking maneuver. So down to 160 slides. More flaps. Let's say 160. So we're still sinking to 700 feet per minute to a target flight level of 2500. And once we have reached that, we should already get the, the airport in sight. Once we can see the runway, we will um, turn the auto throttle to our touchdown target speed, 140 knots, and apply full flaps, and of course um, lower the gear. This is paramount. So always, right before touchdown, double check that you're on full flaps and gear down. Make sure that you don't sink lower than the 2,500 feet that we have chosen here. We, what we absolutely do not want is we don't want to touch down before the runway begins. If you're a little bit too fast at touchdown, you can still manage this. You can brake harder, you can use thrust reverses, but a touchdown before the beginning of the runway is absolutely fatal. This is the situation you must avoid at any cost. So 278, according to the map instrument, that should do. Now we keep this flight level until we got the landing lights in sight. We let the autopilot do the job for the time being. can see we're a little bit right of the runway center line so we turn a little bit to the left to aim for the left side until this uh, the runway really seems to be totally uh, vertical here until it's a vertical line on the horizon now it looks good now we turn to the right again Okay, and as we got the runway clearly in sight, we lower the gear, we lower the speed, 150, we lower the flaps, full flaps, and we disengage the autopilot, back to the right to align with the runway, point the nose down a little bit more. Look for those landing lights. They are very good uh, orientation if your if your uh, sync rate is correct. 
Okay, it's getting a little foggy. Let's see if we can handle that. Lower the speed to 145. Okay, at least the end of the runway is clear, clearly visible. I think in a real world situation, a rookie pilot would not attempt a landing now with this uh, limited visibility, but as this is just a simulation and I don't want to keep you waiting all day, so we will try our touchdown this time. Okay, let's aim more to the right. We are off track again. There don't seem to be any landing lights visible. Okay, the, the visibility is getting better again. And we go for our target speed, 140. Make sure that you flare up the plane. Uh, when you're 50 feet above the ground so when there is a warning 50 you should you should flare up you should pitch up the nose so that uh, you touch the runway first with your main gear and not with the front gear that would destabilize the plane it would probably damage the front gear and it would also uh, lead to a very instable um, roll situation on the runway so we're a little bit too high. Let's sink a little steeper and only use the aileron for heading for heading management, not the rudder, not yet. The rudder is something you would use only in the very last moments of the touchdown. Okay, we can be quite active with the with the yoke. Don't use the pedals yet. And of course, how do you activate the wheel brakes? We are on maximum auto brakes. That should be done automatically. But if it doesn't, you can press both both uh, rudder pedals forward with your toes instead of the heels. Both forward. That should activate the wheel brakes. So let's go down a little steeper. Let's turn more to the right. Sink rate. Sink rate. Okay. Approaching to nine. And we should not forget to disengage the auto throttle immediately after touchdown. Five hundred. Okay. I will sink rate. Disengage the auto throttle. Up. Pull up. Pull up. Sink rate. Sink rate. One hundred. And 50. we flare rate. with fifty. 30. We flare the nose up. Okay, let's activate the thrust reversals. Use the use the rudder pedals for steering. Okay, we're now. Okay, autopilot and auto throttle is engaged. We're on maximum. We're on maximum auto brakes. So now we're blocking the entire airport. I think the ATC will be very, will be very angry with us uh, because we're blocking his whole beautiful airport. Both runways were in the middle of the crossroads. We shut down the engines. Okay, and not a very beautiful landing, but a successful one in case you're just a passenger who uh, all of a sudden finds himself in charge of the airport, uh, of the air plane. So this is it for today. This was this little um, passenger emergency tutorial in case you lost your pilots. So I hope you enjoyed watching this little tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Goodbye.